That's a big time prophecy. Must be a prophet must be a prophecy convention. <laughs> Four hundred prophets. Not to mention all the preachers and their prophets. <laughs> the bishops and district elders who think they're prophets. <laughs> and all them. Can you see this? Four hundred. And Jehoshaphat didn't gather together. Ahaz did. He got them together. He knew all the false prophets. He didn't get them all together. And there's no sorters of number. And said unto them, Shall I go against Raymond Gilead to battle? Or shall I prevail? And they said, Go up. For the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. All 400 said that. That's incredible. Not one of the 400 disagreed. How do you get that to happen? Some of ours got different opinions. 398 might have said go up. Two said, no, I wouldn't go up right here. All 400 said go up. My goodness, something wrong with that picture, isn't it? And Jehoshaphat said, he's a little more spiritual. Is there, uh, 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 do you have a prophet of the Lord here? <laughs> Is there somebody besides this game? <laughs> they might inquire of him. I'm sure he has a very tactful, very diplomatic. You know? But he dished off on the prophets with that one question. He said, their message don't mean nothing. You know, I, you know, I said we would inquire of the Lord, and then you went around the prophets, and none of them spoke the Lord's word. Mm -hmm. They said, what the Lord's going to do, that God didn't say, the Lord should deliver it to the hand of the king. But nobody spoke his words. So, is there anybody, just one person? It's giving you a lot of misinformation in this, in this message. I'm not going to finish it tonight, I'm going to finish it Sunday. You can just about expect the ratio today to be 400 to 1. Mm. Mm. False promise. You got easily 2,000 churches in Los Angeles. At least. That's 5 times 400. That means you might have 5 real prophets. 5 churches where God's word is really going forward. And not the what Jesus did and how he did it, who he did it to, and when he did it, and so on and so forth. You know, hear that by most, from most of them. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Emma. It's funny. This false prophet specialist knew a real prophet. And could identify him. Hmm. Knew who he was. We don't ever call him to do anything or to speak, but I know where he is and who he is. Hmm. If you really want to hear from the Lord, then just, you know, I can get him. Hmm. This is one man. I guess for him. Micaiah, the son of Emma, by whom we may inquire the Lord. But I hate him. <laughs> For a prophet, what an honor <laughs> to be hated by the one who knows all the false prophets. Can okay, ask more than that. Once you make the hate list in this world, you've arrived. And as a prophet, if you're on the hate list of this world, you're up there. That means you're doing something right. I hate it. Why? For he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. He does not tell me what I want to hear. Ever. You know, I mean, I can just see an ass saying, you know, I'm a good person. I don't go up here and snatch Raymond Gilead from this man, but I'm a good person. 
I'm not as evil as he makes me look to be. Because every time he preaches and I'm present, I'm portrayed as an evil man. And I hate it. God had to do with it. He never put God in the midst of this prophet. It's just him, personal. Hate this prophet. They never thought about the fact that maybe this prophet is talking for God. Because that's what he just asked for. He says, you're not here a prophet of the Lord besides. So yeah, there's one. And Josaphat says, you know, let the king say so. Don't, don't say that. Right? He's trying to be diplomatic still. So don't, don't call him that. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither and Micaiah, the son of Remnant. And the king of Israel, and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne, having put on the robes. I want you to see what an important gathering this is. They had their thrones brought there and put their king's clothes on. And it was a big pomp and circumstance. As the kings marched in and some of the thrones that got 400, 400 prophets in the choir stand, it's a big religious service. And they put on their robes, and a boy placed in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. I wish I'd been there. I, I wish I'd been there just to see this one. Not that I expect to get anything out of it, but just to watch the show. <laughs> All the prophets. It was a prophet, a, a, a prophetic show. You understand what's going on here? The prophets were putting on a show and entertaining the kings. With the message the kings want to hear. What was it? Go up. The Lord's going to be with you. Go up and prosper. It was like a choir of prophets. All the same message. Check out this demonstration. It gives, you, it gives you a little piece of the action here. It gives you a peek behind the curtain. You want to read it? And Zedekiah, the son of Chenanah, made him horns of iron. He didn't make them there. He brought them with him. As he's going to demonstrate the word of the Lord. He has some, he has some, some, a visual. He had to take some iron. He made horns of iron. So when the king asks to go for anything, I'm going to be ready to put him to show. He planned it out. And when it's his turn to prophesy before them, because so they all did. I'm looking at this, I don't know about you, Sid. Besides the fact that there are 400 in unison prophesying, I believe that each one of them had their own turn. Why else would the king dress up? It's in his throne. You're going to hear a whole lot of prophecies today. 400 of them. And this one here can prepare it. He made horns. He came with horns. He went to a football game. He had the, the, the fence from the D. Yeah. <laughs> He's got horns. And he said, Thus said the Lord. With thee, with thee shalt thou push the Syrians until thou hast consumed them. Uh, each prophet didn't talk too long. Okay? Because they'll be forever. They're thrilled again. Keep your, keep your comments to 30, 30 seconds. <laughs> and they're obedient. He had his already, you know. With these, he come with his horns. With these horns, you're going to push Syria out the way. And they're all. And all the prophets says, hey, they praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's wonderful. And they probably got greater if I could put the best show on. Did you, did you check out, did you check, what is his name, Chinonai? Did you check out Chinonai? Oh, that was cool. I'll use that next time I have to have a meeting like this. I'm going to make some horns. <laughs> <laughs> He's giving a demonstration of what they did. Yeah. They all put a show on. Every one of them. And all. The prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to him and kill him and prosper. I said, This here is a, a prophecy 
It's a funny story with applications to the last day's church. Because right? the order, the word of the day, the buzzword is prosperity. That's the word. It's being preached in most churches by most preachers. Somewhere in the message, if it's not the message, it always makes the way to the message. Yes. And I don't care how much they got to force the text and contrive the meaning of the text to make it happen, they make it happen. Mm -hmm. Every message I, I hear, I pay a lot, of, a lot of close attention to them. Somewhere in there is that you're supposed to get, you're, it's, time for, it's time for you, it's your time. How can any man say that about somebody walking with God and tell them it's your time for a blessing? Who knows that? You go tell somebody that they get sick, they're not gonna like you very much. <laughs> you're trying to do best, Robert. Then you can't get up. I mean, they got songs. They play on KJLH. It's your time. It's your blessing. So and so forth. That's all they do. What God has for you. Am I right or wrong? Right. Y'all got too quiet now. You're not allowed to get quiet. <laughs> For the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. What was your first message? Words, same words. For the Lord shall deliver it to the hand of the king. It's a done deal. And we all 400 signed off on it. And the messenger that was gone to call Mekai spake to him, saying, Behold now, look, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Nobody in this group you ain't going to hear said anything bad or evil or discourage, to discourage the king from going up to this battle. Ain't nobody. So they all said good with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. Sounds good to me. Be the easiest message you ever preach. Just go in and sign up on you know, blessing, blessing prosperity, and you have no flack because nobody's going to oppose you because that's what they're all preaching. And you won't be that one prophet anymore that they can't stand you'll be a part of the 400. <clears throat> and we'll get blessed. We'll get blessed. It'll work. I'll be honest with you. I have never even been tempted to go in that direction. It's never crossed my mind. I sat on as a servant for the Lord to be his messenger, and whatever he says, that's that, no matter how it affects me. When Elijah called for the famine for, for the heavens to be shut for three and a half years, it didn't rain in his backyard either. <clears throat> he became a victim of his own prayer. And so often it's the case when you preach God's word, you become a victim of the word you're preaching. You can always bail out. Except unless you're Jeremiah or Isaiah, maybe said they'll thug for bear. Then it was like a fire in their bones. They kept on preaching that message about the coming of the Lord Anne. <laughs> Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. It's like I can see him saying in the sense that, Why did you have me come here expecting anything else? You know, you got, you, it's not for lack of profits, not for lack of putting in the program. You got plenty of them, that show's still going on. You guys, this show's been going so long, you all got time to go find me and bring it back and church is still going on. Yeah. <laughs> They're still prophesying. Everybody got a word, everybody got a message. Everybody got a blessing. A plan for a blessing. Blessed cloth. Some blessed tap water. <laughs> So 
So he came to the king. And the king said to him, okay, shall we go up against Raymond Gilead to battle? Or shall we prevail? And he answered him. You guys know how I feel about this text. <laughs> I, I, I created this fantasy. He answered them, Go and prosper. <laughs> For the Lord shall deliver to the hand of the king. <laughs> what an easy message. You guys study for that message. You have to wait for any kind of anointing? No. No direction? Just say, go up and prosper and preach what everybody else is preaching. Why not? Why not? I'm serious now. Why not? It's not a bad idea, you think. It really isn't. Really go through this. For the last 30, 20 years. Just go ahead and preach whatever else is preaching. No much, no fuss, and you get blessed. You learn, you learn how to make merchandise of people. You learn how, learn how to get the money. And I know how to do that a long time ago at church. I just couldn't compromise the message for it. Only problem. So he just came out and said, Praise the Lord, go and prosper. He started shaking, I guess, if I were me, I don't start shaking the prophet's hand. All the false prophets. Well, I'm with you guys, that's support. Go and prosper! What'd y'all say? For the, for the Lord's deliverance into the king's hand. <laughs> uh, he's a true minister guy. He forgot their message, so he had to go for, for the Lord, For the Lord should deliver, go from prosper, for the Lord should deliver to the king's hand. <laughs> Praise God. Let's give God a hand. Why not? Suddenly, you got 400 friends. <laughs> You have 400 potential meetings. <laughs> well, thank God for Josephat. And the king said to him, How many times? Uh, do you get the impression that this is the first time a guy did this? <laughs> He's done it before. He's probably been caught out at the last minute to, 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 to support some other stuff. And he did the same thing. And so Joshua said, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? How many times I tell you that? How many times I tell you don't come out here and, and play that game? <laughs> <laughs> this is a repeat. It's been going on over and over again. He said, and when, when Makai came out, every time Makai came out, he said, Yeah, well, what, what's the rest of them say? I'm with them, yeah. And shout, and shout, cut a step. <laughs> Start it off. I'm going to start jumping off with $10,000. <laughs> it's happened before. Lord, there's so much stuff tonight as we go along. Did I not tell thee? What verse I And he said, I saw all Israel. Now here's the difference. A real prophet's going to have an inside message. They're not going to say, just don't go up, but they're going to tell you why you shouldn't go up. Okay? So now he's going to give them detail. He said, I saw all Israel scattered up on the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. Can you imagine how quiet it got in this place? Real quiet. Can you imagine how confused those false prophets are at this point? He just came in and endorsed them. Go up and prosper. The Lord shall deliver into the king's hand. And all of a sudden, he's got another message. And just sit back and I can see their faces change slowly. They're not really sure what happened yet. Some are too dumb to figure it out. The other ones, you know, the sharper ones. Isn't it? I knew it was kind of some kind of revelation. 
<laughs> that God didn't show nobody else. Mm. I expected that. Mm. I saw Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Which talking about? The two kings? These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. That's the word of the Lord. At that point, somebody should have been spiritual to, 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 have, to have Micaiah come and get the benediction. And he prayed and everybody gone. No harm, no fire. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? I told you <laughs> not to have him come and preach. Because every time he come, he makes a mess. Let me get the rest of this mess. You're going to come back Sunday. Okay. 